Finally, I wanted us to cover the idea of functions that take arbitrary number of parameters. Have we seen this before? Well, yes, if you recall, whenever we have um, an addition, it does take an arbitrary number. So we saw with two, we saw with one, we saw it with zero, and we saw it with more than two. So that is all possible. And if you run it, you get Z, you get three, you get zero, you get zero here. And we even talked about uh, zero being the neutral element of addition. And then here you get six. So as you've seen, um, the addition does support zero or more arguments. So it supports a variable number of arguments. Similarly, we also saw uh, with end, right? And also takes a variable number of arguments. You can ignore what, what it's going to return, but it does work with that. Similarly, or works with that. So if I run this, it also works. And if I, um, as you probably imagine, subtraction, multiplication, division, oops, division by zero, you don't want that. So let's do multiplication and let's do division. Okay. So as you can see, it works for everything. So multiplication, subtraction, all the arithmetic operators and the logical operators, they support a variable number of arguments. But how could I go about and given a list of arguments, make sure that my function that takes a, an arbitrary number of, of arguments and I call it. So that's a bit different, right? That's not really um, handling an arbitrary number of arguments, uh, which is explained uh, here. So I'm gonna explain that. So please bear with me in a moment. So before I get to that point, I want us to think about the you can think of the arguments as a list, right? And indeed, in your homework assignment, when we think about the evaluation, in uh, homework assignment two, while you're parsing a function application, what you have is a list of all the arguments. So, um, it does make sense if you try to think of a functional programming language, the, the need to call an arbitrary function and call it with a, an arbitrary number of arguments. Right? So let's say that the function does accept those arguments. So let's say it's a function that takes two arguments and you have a list of two elements. Wouldn't it be nice to call that function since you have that list of two elements? Similarly, if your function has 10 arguments and you have a list of 10 arguments. So you would like to programmatically call a function and pass a list of arguments. And you can do that with apply. Okay. So what apply allows you to do is you have a list. So in this case, I have apply and I have plus, and if I pass a list of one, two, three, four, five, what that does is the same as, so let me comment this out. That is the same as calling a function with those arguments. Okay, so the test passed. If I do a four here, fails okay so the test is passing like so um, so apply can be used if you give it a function so let's say I have my define f I have a function that takes x y z and what I do is I return x plus y plus z right I can now call apply f and I take a list one two three and the return would have to be six, right? Okay. And of course, if I pass the wrong number of arguments, I get an error. I get an error D mismatch. Okay. So this is how apply works. And for instance, you can implement some this way, right? You could take, um, you could take, um, Let's try to implement sum by using apply. And what sum should do is apply uh, recursively 
you could do it in two ways, right? You could do you could try to implement apply define sum and takes a list. And what sum does is uh, plus uh, wait condition, and then you check if it's empty. If the list is empty, return zero. Otherwise, return a plus first first of the list and a sum of the rest of the list, right? So this would be um, one way. Let's call this v1. If I do sum v1 and I do list of one, two, three, four, five, and this would be check equal same as adding one, two, three, four, five. So this would be one way, all right? You could use a binary operation uh, to encode this, but you can define sum much a much more simple way because you know that plus takes an arbitrary number of arguments. So if I take my my addition and I pass L, apply to it. It would also work. Right? So the test pass, which means this this works. Okay. So very simple way to define summation. Take a function, addition, and apply it to the list of arguments. This is the, the version. And then you could also implement version 2, which is the tail recursive version. Right? Would also work. Full write would also work in this case because addition uh, is commutes. So it doesn't matter how you apply it. Okay, the other thing that I want to show you, and it's the last slide, it's a very short one, is that you can define functions that take an arbitrary number of arguments by using the dot, where the dot says everything after this, I, um, I will store in a list. Okay, so let's say I'm going to define my function that does hello world. Okay, and what hello world does takes x, y, it, it takes um, the message, and then it takes um, some name. And what it does is string append hello. And then it takes the name. And then writes the message at the end. Okay, so let's say you wanted to write something like this. Hello world, and then I say my name, Tiago, and then be well. Okay, so if I call this, I get the string. Okay, I got a string that has be well as the message. Um, oh, wait, I kind of wrote the things in the wrong order. Okay. But let's say instead of um, instead of writing it in this way, um, let's say I want to write that my message is actually a list of strings, right? So I could write it like this. I do list. Oh, actually, be well. Yes. Okay. Actually, this is a stupid example. Let me kind of do things in another way, which is, let me do, what can I do? The list. Oh, okay. I know what I'm going to do. I want to take, um, I know what I want to do. It takes a number. Okay. And it multiplies by all the elements. Okay. So let me think of this. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a uh, mult. Okay. So this takes a vector multiplication. It takes the number. So what I want to do, I want to do a map of this number um, 
lambda takes x does multiplies x by that number and I want to take all the elements. Okay, so I want to do a, a scalar times a vector. So I want to say vec mult and I take a 10 and I take a list with one, two, three. What that does is it multiplies 10 by every element of the list, right? So in this case, I have 10 and 30. Okay, what I'm saying is if I place a dot here, what that means is that whatever arguments come after the dot will be all grouped together in a single list. So it will be effectively the same thing. Okay, if I... Okay, you can imagine the dot being here in terms of order, right? So anything that comes after the dot so if I have an empty list, that's what I get, an empty list, because I'm returning the elements, right? Again, because the first argument is 10, and then everything that comes after that first argument becomes a list. It doesn't have to be one, so it could even be zero. So for instance, if I want to multiply 10, um, so if I write 10 here, I get a list with 100, I do 10, 20, Hundred and you know if I do x and y, that means that now the dot is moved here, which means now my list only has thirty. Right? Okay. So basically, just play around with the dot to to kind of see how it works. Um, but it's just a way. In in C, this is known as var args. Uh, and in Python, you would write it like with a star. Uh, you would do something like this. And with in C, I think you do something like this. I actually forget the syntax. But in in Racket, you do dot and then whatever comes after that. It will be just a single parameter that will capture all the all the all the arguments you pass it to. Okay. So I think that that's basically it, what I wanted to show you. I will upload um, homework three as soon as possible, so today. Uh, and I hope you have had fun with this module three on essentially a rehash of, or, or a reinterpretation of all the functional patterns that we've learned for lists, and now we're applying them to infinite data structures. Uh, and finally, we closed off with thinking about evaluation in terms of how we would implement it. So have a good one.